In the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is a gospel that most people kind of push to the side. They, it's one of the ones they say, you know, this is not practical. God really doesn't mean that. You know, how could that possibly be? It's too difficult. It's like when the Lord says, if someone slaps you in the face, turn the other cheek and let him slap you there too. And you go, oh no, that's too much. That's too much. What's he talking about? Sell all that you have, give it to the poor and come follow me. No, I can't do that. Why is he asking such extreme things? Because in doing so, people say, the message is fine, but the method is impossible. And why do we say that? Why do we hear the call from God to change, the call from God to free ourselves up from everything that binds us to things outside of God. We understand that, but then when he gives the method, it's just too difficult. He says, love your enemies. We can't even love our family. What do you mean love our enemies? We can't love our next door neighbor. We can't love people in our country. We're going to war all the time. But he says, love your enemies. Why do you think he says such extreme, difficult things for us to do? And of course, because it is so difficult, we let it go. We pay no attention to it. He tells us this because the purpose you and I were created is to love, serve, and obey God. No other reason are we on this earth. We're not here to have babies. We're not here to get married. We're not here to have children. We're not here to, to make money to get... Ha no. Those are the things we do while going towards God. But they're not the purpose. The purpose is we were created to love, honor, and obey God. That's the only reason we are here as humans. And if we fail in that, we fail as humans. Tough one. A very tough one. Because... Starting with me, I know that the most important, the most that I pay to pay attention to, the one I cater to, is me, me, what I want, how I feel, not anything else. It's because we don't understand. We exist because of the love of God. We don't exist because our mother and father. That was a biological activity. But if God didn't bless it, it wouldn't have happened. If God didn't bring your mother and father together, it wouldn't happen. It happens because God desired that you be born. Desired that you are in this world to love, serve him, and be with him in the life to come. Not the insanity of this world. I will pray tomorrow. I will change next week. I will do it later. Now I have to live for me. And what you're doing is you're not living for you, you're killing yourself. You are getting so addicted to the pleasures of this world, so addicted to yourself, so addicted to your self-will, that you give a pittance, a tiny little bit of your day, your life, to God, and the rest you indulge yourself. And then when it comes to the end, you have nothing for yourself. It's like if you've got a wonderful job, you've been struggling very hard, and you wanted a job that would take care of you. And it brought you everything monetarily, materially you could possibly want. But instead of saving it, instead of sharing with others, all you did was spend it and spend it and spend it and do things that destroyed your life. Drugs, alcohol, all the crazy things that make us not human, but insane. And then at the end, you have nothing. And what do you do? If you say, Lord, just forgive me and change it all, he'll forgive you, but he's not going to change it. You have to change it. God gave us the ability to make our life one with his. He will not force us. He will not say, these things aren't enticing. I'll take the enticement away so you come. He says, no, no. If you love mother, father, brother, sister, child, husband, wife, self more than you love me, you will not have me, he says. So are we going to have the Lord? Are we going to spend eternity with the Lord? Or are we going to waste our lives and spend eternity with the one that has destroyed us the most, ourselves? Nobody else. There'll be no one there to help. There'll be no one there to take away the pain. 
It'll be just our insanity that we keep looking and saying, why? Why did I do that? Why did I waste? What is wrong with me? But you've got to say that forever, for eternity. And forever is a very long time. So turn today to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm weak. I don't know how to do it. But with your grace, with your love, with your strength, lead me. Keep me from the sins. Let me see your face. Let me change. So at the end of your life, the Lord will look at you and say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter now into the kingdom of your Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.